So now we're going to move over to the cam portion of this part. So again, we just did the CAD, so we just added all these features, all, all this sort of stuff, just added all that. So now we're going to go over to the manufacturer tab, create a new setup and go ahead and start adding this tool path to it. Okay. So go up here to new setup. Mine's automatically defaulting to setup six where I've kind of ran through this part before, before I shot the video. Uh, yours should default to set up five or whatever. It, do, it doesn't matter because we're going to change the name anyway. All right. So our orientation, we're going to select Z and X. So we know that we want to hold this part like this with our engraving to us. Okay. So we're going to be putting the largest surface possible on the back jaw and then the engraving will be to us. All right. So our Z axis, I'm just going to select a, an edge that goes up and down in the Z axis and our X axis, I'm simply going to select something that runs along the X axis. All right. So I got lucky. Uh, mine is in the correct orientation right from the get go. Um, but I'll tell you what you do if, if, if that doesn't happen. All right, let me go ahead and, and get one step ahead and we'll come back to that. So I'm going to make absolutely certain that I select model box point. Okay. So model box point is what you want. And that's where you select whichever surface you want you know, whatever point you want to, to be your origin. Okay. Now th this is also, you know, if you had some sort of, you know, really odd part, whatever with, with crazy features and things, and you didn't have anything that you could necessarily pick up on really easily, then you can, um, go back and do sketches. Okay. So you, you can, you know, let's say that I wanted my feature, you know, a quarter inch back from this, or if I wanted my origin a quarter inch back from this feature. Um, now that would be kind of odd to do, but if, if you wanted that, you could always go um, selected point and you could have a sketch back in CAD where you could simply select that point. All right, pretty, pretty simple. Um, but again, for this, we're going to go model box point and I'm going to pick that back left corner, right? Um, I'm not going to pick this back right corner because it's going to be really hard to pick up that X, right? Obviously I'm not going to pick here because it would be really hard to pick that up as well. Um, I guess I could, I could do it here, but it, I, you know, I always like setting my offsets off the back corner wherever possible. Okay. Um, now going back to the orientation. All right. So if I wanted to, uh, manipulate my orientation, let's say my Y was going the wrong way, then you could simply click that Y and it flips it. You could click the Z. You, you can, you can manipulate that however you want. Now mine seems to be jumping around a good bit, but, um, but you can, uh, you can manipulate that however you want. So I'm going to go back and, and set all mine back the way it should be. And box point is going to be here. Pretty, pretty simple. Okay. Then I'm going to go right over here and I'm going to change this to no additional stock. And then for my post process, I'm going to name this 50, 114. I'm sorry, 115. 50, 115. This is uh, in shop part five. So I'm just going to go 50, 115. And for my comment, this is going to be in shop part five.
Okay. Then okay. I'm gonna go ahead and slow double click that. In shop part five. Josh McDowell, whatever. Okay. Now from there, we're going to go new operation, 3D milling, and we're going to do an adaptive clearing. So when you get into this adaptive clearing, it, it's, a, it's a really, really cool strategy that, that can really, really save you a good bit of time, you know, where you don't have to go in and select a lot of different features. You know, it kind of, you, you give it a range of what you want to cut and it, and it does that for you, does all that, that calculation for you. Um, so we're going to do this with a quarter inch end mill, okay? Um, and, you know, just trying to give you guys a, a good, you know, understanding of a lot of the different end mills and things. Um, so I have already built this tool, you know, where, where I did, uh, tell you what I'll do. I will delete these tools and we'll go ahead and start and we'll, we'll go through building those again. <clears throat> All right, so let me go back. Um, so I will click up here in shop part five, version four or version whatever, you know, that we're, we're just, you know, this, this project and you click plus We'll go ahead and build a flat end mill. This is going to be a 250 three flute S carb. And in previous videos, I've uh, I haven't really mentioned this, but um, all of the S carb end mills that we have, all of the you know they come in a blue tube made by Kiyosera, um, The S carbs are all three flute. All right? Um, if it's not a three flute, it's not an S carb. All right, so it's um, you know, so I haven't necessarily specified uh, three flute when I when I do specify an S car, but um, if you didn't know, now you know. All right, so jump over here to cutter. It's a three flute carbide. It is two hundred and fifty thousandths in diameter. All right. Now my flute length is 750. All right, all of this stuff is good. When you get to cutting data, we're going to change that to 10,000 RPM. And my cutting feed rate, I'm gonna say for that, let's go about 60 inches a minute. My ramp feed rate will go about 30 and plunge feed rate about 15. All right, so we're gonna go about two thou per tooth uh, when we're cutting. And of course, when we're ramping, that's, that's 50%, okay? And then when we're plunging, that's a quarter of the normal uh, feed rate, okay? In post-processor, this is where I type this again. And accept. And while we're here, we may as well go ahead and build the, uh, the ball end mill that we're gonna use. So, ball end mill. We're gonna use a 375 ball nose. Three flute S carb. Okay. All right, ball and mill, three flute carbide, 0.375. And my flute length on that is one inch. That's good, holder's good, cutting data. It will go 10,000 RPM on that as well. And our cutting feed rate on this one is gonna be about 60 as well. And 
in our lead in. We'll just go about 15 on that one. And the post processor, just copy and pasted that from my general tab. So the post processor is where you put, you know, your comment that's going to be uh, post processed and stuck with that tool. Okay. From there, except we're going to select that quarter inch end mill. Okay. And for our geometry, it needs to know what do we want to cut. All right. Um, so I, I tell you what, we, we don't really have anything that we can select. So if I, if I tried to click selection, and if I, if I tried to tell it, you know, so if I clicked here and I told it, stay inside of this boundary, all right? Then let, let's, see, let's see what this is gonna do. All right, I, I don't think it's gonna do well, but we'll, we'll see, all right? And all, all of this stuff should be good. Um, you know, you, you can rest machining that really comes into play if you have already done something with another tool. Um, but, you know, rest machining on and off shouldn't change anything uh, at this stage. Okay. Uh, our heights, we need to tell it where do, you know, what's the upper limit of what we want to cut? What's the lower limit of what we want to cut? All right. So for top height, you can do model top for bottom height we will go selection and we want you to select right here so there's no need for this tool to go any deeper so that's the lower limit so we told it where we wanted it to stay in the x and y on this page and then we told it how deep we wanted it to go on this page we're giving it a containment boundary. Now for my passes, for my optimal load, um, you know, depending on what you're doing, um, you know, th this is this is arguable, you know, what you want your optimal load to be. Um, you know, some people will, will want to say, you know, 25% of your cutter or 50% of your cutter, but that really depends on your setup. If you've got a really good rigid setup, and you've got really, really good coolant, and you've got really good tool holding and everything else, then yeah, you can you can push these cutters pretty hard. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm going to set this at about 50 thousandths. And I always end up coming back tweaking this number a little bit. So I'm not super concerned about getting this one right, you know, right off the get-go. I want to I wanna look at the tool path. Okay? And then... Uh, you know, direction that's going to be climb milling. You know, obviously we want to climb as much as possible. And my maximum roughing step down. So how much can I go down maximum? And I'm going to set that to 375. Okay. Now you can set that to whatever you want. If you want to, if you, if you think that, um, you know, that that's too aggressive, then you can always set that to an eighth inch or a quarter inch or whatever. All right. Um, but I'll show you what that means here in a second. But I wouldn't want you going any more than 375. So my fine step down, I'll show you what that means here in a second once we get it up on the graphics. And we are going to leave 20 thousandths on all surfaces in the radial direction, so X and Y. And then we're going to leave 20 in the axial direction, so in the Z. All right, and everything on this linking page should be good. We're going to click OK so we can take a look at the tool path. Okay, so it, it only stayed over here. You see that? So obviously we need to uh, correct that because we want to we want to machine all over in here too. But this is a good opportunity to show you my major step down is 375. So if I measured from the top of the part down to where this cut, that was 375. And then it comes down, and you see how it's leaving 20 thousandths of material down here? It came down and machined everything it could, 
and then it's stepped up by my spine step over and cut and cut and just kept kept doing that because it's trying to get near net shape okay and I tell you what even though this is wrong I will show you what it looks like really quick just so you can see so there's my major step down there's another major step down and here's a minor step down so a fine step down or step up however you want to call it so you know with this tool path it's just trying to get it close to net shape okay now just uh just you know to kind of prove a point let me show you what a higher fine step down would do obviously this is going to destroy my runtime but i think it'll be okay So you can see, you know, obviously it's taken a long time to calculate, but you can see how fine that step up is. You know, that's going to give us a, a, a part that's much closer to net shape because, um, you know, obviously it's stepping up one thousandths per cut. But you can see this is going to take, you know, two years to run. So we don't... Uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and edit that, come back over here and change this to something reasonable. I think it defaults to 10%. Okay, so that, that is, uh, that's fine. So I've got a, uh, got a warning here. Let's see what that warning is. So show log. And it was just telling me the toolpath generation was aborted by the user back in here and regenerate that should go away okay so that that's all that was anytime you get a warning uh, you can right click and show log and that will uh, that will give you everything you need to know all right so we need to give it a different containment boundary so obviously we uh, we messed something up there so let's go back in here I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to tell it, I'm going to click this one. All right, let's just see what happens. So now it's cutting the inside, but it's not cutting the outside. So jump over here and let's try this. Okay, so that, that actually worked. I, I didn't actually didn't anticipate that working, but, um, but hey, it, it worked. Um, what I have had to do in, uh, in previous um, packages, uh, you know, CAD, CAD, CAD CAM packages, is um, give it like a sketch boundary of where you want it to stay. And, uh, and I'm gonna show you how I do that, um, you know, because when you get to your car, uh, it's it's not going to be as easy as it just was. Like I'm I'm honestly surprised that it happened that easy. But I'm going to go ahead and save it. I want to get in the habit of saving it as much as possible. I'm going to jump back over here. I'm going to open a sketch, and I'm going to project. Okay. So what project does is it takes any sketch from any level, and it projects that up to your current sketch. So I'm going to come in here and just select all of these lines. Okay. 
okay and then okay and then I'm going to hide my body just to show you so now I have a sketch boundary of you know where I want this tool to stay within okay so I'm gonna finish this sketch turn my bodies back on and I'm gonna jump right back over here to manufacture and edit and I'm going to give it a new machining boundary which is right there and you know again this this bottle you know isn't a really good example to show this on but I promise you that you'll need to use this when you uh, when you get on your derby car you will need to project containment boundaries and things like that up that's just something that you always have to do with 3D milling. Okay. Okay. And now it's going to grab everything from within that containment boundary. Okay. Let me show you one more thing on containment boundaries and then we'll move on to the next thing. So if I wanted to set my tool center on boundary, then I want you to watch what happens. It's not gonna let the center of my tool go outside of my boundary, okay? Now, if I do tool inside boundary, it's not gonna let any part of my tool go outside of the boundary. Okay, so obviously this is this is not what we want here. You know, theoretically this should make a good part. I mean, if, if you if you really think about it, it, it it should, you know, get us get us pretty close. But let's take a look. So the biggest problem with doing it this way is these little areas right here. Okay. Now this would be good if we had some sort of work holding or something that was going to be in the way and we just needed to get some material out. But let me show you one more thing. Still, still on containment. But we will go outside boundary and I'm going to give it an additional offset of something huge. You know, one inch. So basically what it did is it took my containment boundary and it just blew it out one inch in, the, in all directions. So anything that it can try to cut, then it's gonna try to do that. Okay, so that's your three different types of containment boundaries, uh, in, inside, center, and outside. All right, so I'm gonna go back and set that to center, get rid of that offset, and okay. All right, now the um, oh, and one other thing, guys. The uh, this is driven by stock, okay. And th this is important to note here. I'm going to go back. I'm going to change this to outside of my outside boundary. I'm going to change that to one inch, and then let's take a look at the tool path. All right, so notice that it's not trying to cut here or here or any of that stuff. You see, it's trying to cut that chamfer, all that stuff, but it's not trying to cut anywhere else. But if I go in here to my setup and I tell it that I've got, let's go fix size box. Let's say that I've got a five inch block now watch what it's going to do. So now it, it sees that it has stock. So it's going to try to cut it. 
All right, so it, it's, it's searching for something to cut, and it's going to cut everything that it can within that boundary. But if we go back and we tell this, hey, there's actually, uh, let's see here, there's actually no additional stock, and regenerate that, then, you know, it, it doesn't think there's any material there. Okay, well, it's trying to cut this side because it thinks there's it thinks there's material. So jump back in here, change this to center, get rid of that, and okay. So now we have the part roughed. Now so wait for that to finish generating. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So now we're going to jump over to the 3D milling. Now I'm going to right click, new operation, 3D milling, and we're going to jump, I'll tell you what, we'll do parallel, okay, and I'm going to go over here and grab my 3 8 ball nose that we already set up. And I'm going to tell it that I want to cut here. Okay. And then this contact point boundary. Uh, if I was you guys, I would take a minute to hover over this button and read it because this is really, really good information uh, with 3D milling. I spent a long time battling this when I was out in the industry because I didn't truly understand it. Uh, but then when I saw this graph, it, it, it made so much sense to me. So make, uh, make sure that you pay attention to this. All right. And then let's go. All oh, that should be good. I'm going to change my step over to about 20 thousandths. I'm going to cut on machine steep areas. And... That should be good, good enough to prove a point. So this tool path is going to be weird. Okay. It's, um, you know, it, it should work, but it's going to be really, really odd. Um, when it's trying to cut this, you know, all this is going to be, you know, decent. But then when it crams down like this line right here, it's going to take a lot of material at one time. Okay. So this is not a tool path that I would recommend doing on this one. All right. Um, and I, I don't have to do any sort of offsets or anything because I've got contact point boundary on. Now, let me show you what it looks like without contact point boundary. Well, actually, I didn't have that on. Wow, okay, that changed a lot. I was not expecting to do that, but uh, but either way, uh, let's see here. Let's let's do an additional like twenty five thousand and see what that does. All right, yeah, that's that's what I was wanting. So it starts water falling. Is what is what that's called. So it comes off of that surface and water falls. All right, you can fix that by setting your bottom height tell it to not go any deeper than that and see how that gets rid of the water falling but this is not a consistent tool path this is not a good choice for this type of cut All right so what i'm going to do and what i'm going to encourage you guys to do is try a bunch of different strategies All right um you know, not necessarily on this part, but when we get to your derby car, I'm going to encourage you guys to try a lot of different strategies. And I'll show you the easiest way to do that. So get one set up decent like this, and then create derived operation, 3D. And then, so we just tried parallel. So try contour. 
it automatically selected that for you. All right, let's go to inside boundary with zero offset. And let's uh, 40 thou step down. That should be good, but let's change that to 20. And see what it looks like. All right, not, not at all what we want. Okay, so let's go in here and try to tweak this a little bit. Let's go tool center on boundary. All right, more in line with what we want, but it's not cutting this bottom. All right, so we can, we can always come in and try to manipulate that a little bit. And we can uh, see machine shallow, flat area detection, turn that off. Still didn't do it. So let's turn uh, this on. Still not doing it. So. You know, I, and again, the reason I picked this, I knew it wasn't going to work. I just wanted to kind of show you guys a couple different strategies. So I'm going to right click and create derived operation 3D. Now we'll try ramp. All right, and just, I mean, jump, jump through these and just kind of try a few different things out. Right, that, that's the, that's the best way to, that's the best way to learn it is to just try a couple things. All right, ramp doesn't look like that's going to be what we want. I'm going to go ahead and jump to what I know we want, and that is going to be scallop. And it is right here. And boundary overlap. Let's see. So jump right here. We're going to do a 10,000 step over. We want to cut both ways and OK. That looks like what we want. Got some really odd linking here, but I think that's going to be just fine. The cutter stays engaged. So I know that we don't want these three here. So I'm just going to delete those. So we've got our scallop here. And then I'm simply going to create derived operation, 3D, and scallop again, except now my machining boundary, I'm gonna set that right there. Then okay. I don't necessarily want to cut the top of that. Do you, do you see what it's doing there? I don't necessarily want to cut the top of that. So what I'm going to do is come in here and select that. So it should stay away from that now. Okay. So we have got everything roughed. We've got everything finished with the, uh, with the scallop. And of course you can come in here and change, let's see here, your step overs, you know, like if you wanted to try 20 thousandths, then you can always come in here and change a lot of that stuff and, you know, kind of get your runtime you know, close to where you think it needs to be. Um, so right now we are looking at a 20 minute runtime. It's just two tools. So it should take you five minutes to set up your tools and, you know, five minutes to set your offsets or whatever. And, um, and you know, 20 minutes to run it. So, and keep in mind, this is an estimate, you know, that this runtime is an estimate. You may go 
um, you know, 10, 20% higher, 10, 20% lower, um, you know, whatever. Uh, so the only thing that I see that's missing is, uh, is some chamfers, and I would like to do a couple of chamfers. So I'm going to right click, new operation, 2D milling, and 2D contour. All right, so I'm going to grab my drill mill, which we have already set up from a previous job. All right, that's tool six. So grab that. And my contour selection, I want to chamfer that. And if you notice that jumped, that arrow jumped to the other side. If you click that arrow, it will, it will go back and forth. All right, now I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave that to one side intentionally. That's a mistake, but I, I, I want you to see what happens. All right, and then if I click here, if you notice what, what it tried to do, it tried to select the entire curve. Um, so that is not what I want. So I'm going to trash that. And I only want to cut here, right? So I'm going to press and hold Alt and select those curves or those, those, uh, those surfaces. Okay. Now notice my arrows are kind of all over the place. I want them all to be on the inside, which is telling the computer or telling the, the, the software what side I want my cutter on. Okay. And then all this should be good. And chamfer, I'm going to put a 15 thousandths chamfer with a 35 thousandths tip offset. And let's do an eighth inch finish overlap. And that should be good. Okay, so let's run this on graphics. Now I want you to want you to notice something. This one looks good down here. This one looks good. And the only indication that something is wrong with this chamfer here is these two lines. And that would be really easy to miss. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and run this on graphics. Okay, now I'm going to turn off models and I want you to look at that. Okay, you see where it's digging in? And what that is, turn models back on, what that is on this one, I had this on the wrong side. That's all that was. Simple, simple little mistake. So now if we run it, Everything should be good, D-Bird. Everything's good. All right. Um, so let me give you one more tip if you're looking for really, really good finishes. Um, is I'm going to go right here to Scallop. And I'm going to duplicate both of them. All right. So I'm going to make, I'm going to duplicate this. And then... And then I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to drag these down here. So I've got rough, my first scallop, second scallop, back to my first scallop, back to my second scallop. Now, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this semi-finish. And then I'm going to call this semi-finish inside. All right, and then this is going to be finish 
outside this, finish inside. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is when I'm on my semi finish, I'm going to leave 10 thousandths in the radial and axial direction. And then here, I'm going to leave 10 thousandths in both of those as well. Now, these here are going to net. All right, these are going straight to the number. There's no additional offset. All right? So, all right, it's, it's, you know, chugging on along. Then I'm going to come in here in a second, do my ball milling. But I'm, I'm wasting a lot of motion here because I'm not looking for a great finish. I'm just looking for a more consistent surface. Um, you know, I don't want that cutter doing a whole lot. Okay, I, I want it just going in kind of refining the surface. So what I'm going to do is go to my semi-finish, go to my passes, and I'm going to do like a 40,000 step over. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing here to my semi-finish. I'm going to do a 40,000 step over. All right, so it's just adding, you see, seven minutes to my runtime, three minutes, 20 seconds, three minutes, 46 seconds, because it's a, it's a, wait a minute, it's adding one minute here and three minutes here. So it's a much more aggressive step over. So the surface is going to look a lot like that, you know, kind of jagged, kind of faceted a little bit. But then my tool is going to come in and refine that. Okay. So now we are at a 24 minute runtime. All right. Six different operations, three different tool changes. Uh, so you've got a quarter inch three flute S carb. You've got a three eighths three flute S carb ball mill. And then you have a chamfer mill and that's it. Okay. So, uh, as usual, uh, draw this part, you're going to submit your code to your instructor, um, on canvas, and then you are going to save this model in your project for your instructor to take a look at and, uh, and, and kind of fine tune, give you some feedback and kind of, uh, make sure you're, you're on the right track. All right. So um, that's going to do it for this uh, in-shop part. Everything from here on out is, uh, is hopefully going to be uh, just the aluminum derby car. All right, so what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to draw a, uh, a kind of generic model of a car that, that I think you know, would, would kind of encompass a lot of different strategies. And then we'll start uh, you know, slowly whittling away at that and get you guys on track to, uh, to build your car. So uh, have a good one.